Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Young. When I first heard the Beatles uh, back there in the 60s somewhere, uh, first thing that I noticed was uh, that uh, I might be able to do this kind of thing myself. And uh, so the first song I ever sang was a Beatles song. I sang, uh, Give Me Money, That's What I Want. <laughs> sang at the school cafeteria, and it didn't go over that good, so we tried, It Won't Be Long, yeah. And that was, that was better. But uh, the Beatles meant a lot to me, and Paul, Paul's music, uh, and particularly his bass playing at that time, was uh, something uh, that a lot of the bands were, were very impressed with Paul's bass playing. Not only that he played left-handed, but he, he really played, you know, I couldn't even really, you know, I only knew two chords, so I was very impressed at the time. But uh, as time went by, and the Beatles got huge, and I joined the Springfield, and Stills and I were listening to A Day in the Life, and we're listening to the last note of A Day in the Life, and listening to Paul's vocals, and John's vocals, and the great things that George did to the record. And, and uh, so it was just like a marriage of... Uh, uh, of all this talent coming together and creating this incredible thing which none of us could really fathom at the time and we were just trying to uh, do our thing you know in the shadow of this great thing that had happened uh, between the Beatles and the Stones and uh, and the Who and, and uh, so I just kept on going and uh, eventually the Beatles broke up and and then uh, about the same time I, I went broke up myself and uh, so I started a solo career, one of the pieces, and uh, that's the same time as Paul came out with his first solo album, the one on uh, Apple Records with Maybe I'm Amazed on it. Which I loved that record because uh, it was so simple, and there was so much to uh, there was so much to, to 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 see and to hear. It was just Paul. I mean, it was so. There was no adornment at all. There was no echo. There was nothing. There was no attempt made to, to uh, compete with, with the things that he'd already done. And uh, so out he stepped from the shadow of the Beatles. And there he was. And, uh, and it uh, kind of blew my mind. And uh, I said, well, maybe I could do this too, you know. So, <laughs> try that. So I made a simple records that didn't have any echo on them for a while. And anyway make a long story short, I knew Linda a long time ago and, and, uh, and we were all very happy when, when Linda and Paul got together and, and they had such a wonderful family, they have such a wonderful family and, uh, and I felt close to them over the years and I have a lot of respect for Paul McCartney as a man uh, for holding together a great family through the, uh, the times of rock and roll and through all of the success and through all of the swirling uh, I have a lot of respect for that and the rest of it is you all know it and uh, he's just a great songwriter one of the greatest songwriters uh, perhaps ever I think he'll be remembered uh, hundreds of years from now for the work that he did uh, starting with yesterday and continuing on to today and tomorrow hopefully so roll the tape uh, Without the Beatles, rock and roll as we know it would not exist. Without Paul McCartney, there would have been no Beatles. In a single year, McCartney wrote and recorded Hey Jude, Blackbird, Helter Skelter, The Long and Winding Road, Let It Be, Get Back, and still had time to knock off Come and Get It back in the USSR and Maybe I'm Amazed. With his solo career, McCartney continued to dominate radio. He wrote big ballads like My Love, rock and roll hits like Junior's Farm and Jet. He even got banned by the BBC for the political message of Give Ireland Back to the Irish. And he continues to push himself forward creatively. 
With Liverpool Oratorio and Standing Stone, he moved into classical composition, while the acclaimed Flaming Pie showed his rock and roll heart is still beating strong. Down the run, sleep, little willow. His partner in all of this was his wife, Linda. Theirs was a great love story. McCartney always maintained that his greatest accomplishment was not the Beatles or his knighthood or being the most successful songwriter of the century. His greatest accomplishment was the family he and Linda raised. With John Lennon and then with Linda, Paul McCartney has remained true to one message above all others. In the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make.